Welcome to another edition of Outdoor University. Today, guys, we are going to be setting some crawfish traps. This is going to be a two-part series. What we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to show you how to set these traps, where to set these traps, what time of the year to set these traps, little tips, tricks, and techniques that we use here at Outdoor University. Then on part two, we are going to have a boil, a crawfish boil. I'm gonna show you the recipe that I use, everything else. So let's get at it. That knife. Okay, here's where we're at today, guys. We are on a major reservoir. A lot of guys won't mess with reservoirs, okay? I happen to love them. We have a riprap shoreline here. Next to a freeway, a lot of riprap, as you can see. A lot of rocks. A lot of good area. All right. What I like to do, guys, is when I do these traps, okay? I like to tie my rope in the middle. These are homemade. Made by Outdoor University. All it is is some sheet steel and some grating. Now, I like to use the bigger grating on it because the smaller crays can escape. And I like that. I like them to be able to get out of there, okay? And only the bigger ones stay captured. So, I tie it in the middle. Cameraman, hand me that bucket. And here's what we're gonna do about bait today, guys. Got some bluegills and some crappies. What I like to do, I just like to slice them up like that. Slice them. Cut the heads for blood. Not all the way through. And then we're gonna load them. Slice them. Cut the heads. Load them. We're gonna do a 48 hour soak on this and then we're gonna come back. We actually killed two birds with one stone with this, guys. We had a pond. One of our subscribers, Jake, thank you, had a pond that had a stunt growth problem. So we decided we were gonna come up in there and start, you know, yanking out some of these gills. All we're gonna do is take this trap now, as you can see, this gets deep very quickly, guys, okay? So, all we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure that them fish are in the middle, throw that trap. Like that. And then we're gonna tie it off. Okay, guys, one thing I need you guys to remember when you're doing this, check the weather, okay? That's north, we are on south. I know that, they're going, that there's gonna be some weather coming in, that the wind's going to be coming out of the north, blowing the south, which means this will be a wind-swept shoreline, okay? Now, one thing you gotta remember on wind-swept shorelines is it blows all the dead stuff over. So the crayfish get real active. They know that that waves are beating against you, so they know it's feeding time for them. Or 
when the wind blows either this way or that way and what it'll do is it'll blow the scent of the bait never use wind when it's blowing the opposite way because what will happen is it's blowing all the dead stuff out away from the riprap so remember that real carefully let's get some more traps set and we'll get back with you okay guys here's another way of doing this if you don't want to tie off you can always put jugs on them for those of you that know where there's riprap piles humps out in the middle of the lake that's usually really good that's what we like to do because that's where the larger crayfish are um because we're not the only ones that catch crayfish here in this body of water so what we like to do is we like you know to go to places that they're not hitting and then all we do is we just mark our jugs and we just go and pull them up all right guys let's get back at it let's get these set and let's get out of here good okay guys this is really 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 important always check your local regulations a lot of states are different. Some only, you know, allow you to possess so many. Some states only allow you to put so many traps up. And some states don't even let you do uh, crayfish, crawfish, mud bugs, wherever you're from. So you guys got to check your local regulations. If you're not real sure, just call your local game warden. They will be more than happy to direct you to where you're supposed to be. I like to get, uh, you know, that blood out there. When I'm... I like to use herring or stuff like that. Skipjacks, you know, stuff that's real oily. Tuna works. A lot of guys like to use catfish. Um... Uh, I'm sorry, catfish, cat food. Sorry, guys. It's been a long day already. But uh, I find that it doesn't really matter the bait. It matters more the location, guys. So remember that. So we're going to get these traps rigged up. And we'll get back with you after we get them all in. And we'll show you the setup. All right, guys, we just got everything set up. One thing I need you to remember is check the regulations on what you're allowed and what you're not allowed to do, how many you're allowed to possess, and how many traps that you're allowed. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a 48-hour soak on these. We're going to come back. We're going to collect them. We're going to see what's going on. I'm Charles Mills with Outdoor University. And remember, please, 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 Take a kid fishing. All along, there's crawl traps, bro. All along here, all right? That way you don't come through.